So this is another example, actually, of uh, long-standing collaboration uh, between academia and government in this case. Uh, you may have uh, already noticed that also my co authors uh, mentioned there, Marcoriani and uh, Aldo Colberini are here, uh, and uh, we, have, uh, we have already a great uh, pleasure uh, to be here uh, with you. So uh, actually, uh, yes, uh, I'm coming from the European Commission in uh, one of the research centers of the uh, European Commission. Uh, it's a quite a big organization. Uh, we are about uh, 3,000. And uh, my location, the location where I am working is in, is in Ispra in Italy. And uh, uh, the uh, collaborators in academia are uh, located in Parma, but not only in Parma, because uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, department uh, 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 led by Marco Riani here uh, involves uh, several universities around Europe, uh, uh, in uh, Valladolid, in uh, 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 Leuven, Siena, and uh, other universities. So it's a quite uh, uh, large organization. With, uh, with Parma, we uh, collaborated since uh, uh, about uh, 15 years. Uh, we will see uh, uh, with uh, which uh, result in a moment. So in my group, my group is uh, formed by more or less 100 people. Uh, with, uh, we work in several uh, areas, uh, so uh, unstructured text, uh, numerical data, big data, and so on. Uh, just a quick overview uh, of what we do. Uh, so my colleagues of the um, um, Earth observation, uh, they collect uh, data in the, uh, the context of the Copernicus program, so they collect uh, geospatial data, and they provide the tools and data uh, open to, uh, to everybody, to academia. So basically, uh, they are the counterpart of the United uh, Geological Survey, the United States uh, Geological Survey. Um, what I do basically is uh, to do things like a detection of human settlement, things like that. Then uh, we have colleagues uh, working on text, uh, text, uh, well, uh, usual, uh, usual, usual stuff, uh, so things like automatic detection of entity, classification, geospatial uh, 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 entities, uh, uh, sentiments, uh, categorization of documents, and so on. And they do it because they need uh, to make online uh, news monitoring for the policy services. So basically there are crisis room in which uh, the politician monitor what's uh, going on in the world. So uh, as far as uh, I'm concerned uh, with the University of Parma, so we monitor uh, the trade, uh, the, Euro the European Union trade, uh, and we do it uh, for, uh, okay, um, market analysis, but not only, especially for anti-fraud. And uh, uh, I will uh, uh, take, uh, let's say, the, the opportunity to explain you uh, uh, what uh, uh, has been the role of robust statistics, in particular in this uh, work of uh, uh, fraud uh, detection, and uh, how in these uh, 15 years of collaboration we have developed with the University of Parma this uh, toolbox, FSDA, uh, which uh, uh, we started to develop uh, uh, more for academic purposes, if you want, but uh, which become, uh, be, um, has become a precious tool uh, for uh, the services that uh, we provide to anti-fraud uh, agencies and uh, uh, to the custom services of the European Union. So this is FSDA. Um, uh, here you can see the, uh, the two websites uh, from uh, which FSDA can be downloaded. Uh, of course, it's, uh, it's a free uh, toolbox. Uh, it's a toolbox uh, which uh, um, uh, it's uh, quite rich. Uh, it's uh, quite rich and there's a very extensive documentation. Uh, this is a, a snapshot of uh, uh, what you would find by installing the toolbox in your, uh, in your uh, uh, PC. So as you can see, the documentation is uh, perfectly integrated in the MATLAB, uh, in the MATLAB standard. Uh, we have uh, many, uh, uh, mm, let's say, categories of, uh, of uh, functions. Uh, uh, for robust regression analysis and transformation, robust multivariate analysis, clustering, dynamic visualizations, uh, and so on. So uh, for each one of these uh, uh, categories, there are several uh, types of tools uh, that uh, uh, you can find. Uh, in the case of robust clustering, you can also uh, simulate uh, uh, data for your uh, benchmark, uh, for your assessments. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, many, many instruments for dynamic uh, uh, visualization, so for interactive uh, and exploratory data analysis, uh, for understanding the uh, uh, characteristics, uh, uh, deeply uh, understanding the characteristics of your uh, data sets. 
uh, the documentation, uh, I would say, that is uh, very well done. Uh, we uh, provide uh, um, uh, an introduction to robot statistics, uh, to the tools, uh, to the mathematics behind. Uh, so we don't leave anything, let's say, undocumented or just uh, superficially documented. Everything is really open and uh, understandable. We have a, a tool uh, for uh, um, uh, translating uh, uh, all the documentation that we have uh, written in our M files, uh, as you can see here, uh, from uh, the uh, head of the M file into the proper HTML documentation, as you can see here in, the, in this picture. So uh, whatever you uh, can find in, uh, your, in our programs, uh, uh, it's also, uh, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, let's say, between our M files and uh, the documentation that uh, you can find in, on the web and uh, in uh, uh, the documentation system of uh, MATLAB. Um, so uh, we have just released uh, uh, one update. Uh, we have uh, two releases uh, every, every year, uh, and every time we document uh, 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 what's, uh, what's new, if uh, we have uh, bugs that have been fixed, uh, and so on and so forth. So I encourage you to, to make a try. Um, uh, now I will give you a flavor of what we do with this uh, uh, FSDA toolbox uh, in anti-fraud, uh, in uh, international trade analysis and anti-fraud, and uh, if I have time, in a couple of other applications. So uh, this is an example of uh, uh, a trade data set. Uh, well, uh, this is an example from a public data set uh, that you can uh, find in Europe, uh, COMEX. Uh, in which you have uh, monthly aggregates of data with values, quantities, supplementary units, and uh, several other variables. Uh, there is a counterpart which is uh, internal uh, to the commission, uh, which is called surveillance, in which you have daily aggregates or even uh, uh, data transaction level, in which uh, you have uh, many more informations, more or less 40, 50 variables. Uh, for the demonstrations of today, I will just use a couple of uh, key var numerical variables, which is quantity and values that have been traded. Uh, then we have also collaboration, bilateral collaboration with the custom services of the European Union, se uh, across several uh, member states, Italy, Belgium, Spain, and so on and so forth. And uh, they give us, uh, uh, let's say, their uh, uh, single declaration level. So all the single transactions that uh, they receive and uh, on which uh, people have to pay in principle taxes. Uh, okay. So uh, which type of uh, patterns we try to detect in this data? This is an example. So uh, this is an example of imports uh, of uh, a certain product. Uh, I don't remember which one, but it's 61, so it must be a textile product from, uh, uh, well, into, uh, from China probably into Poland and Estonia. In the first case, uh, uh, on the left, uh, you see uh, Estonia, and uh, well, everything seems to be okay. Uh, the, 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 the green line uh, that you see are the estimates that we do using our FSTA toolbox, uh, and uh, not only, so a few other, uh, let's say, intricacies and, uh, and um, um, algorithmic uh, uh, peculiarity that we cannot uh, really disclose. But anyway, uh, this is an estimated price, the green one, the one that we estimate over time. And uh, as you can see, uh, the, the, the small circles in the case of Estonia are quite uh, in line with our estimate. In the right case, uh, it is uh, certainly not the case. It's uh, imports in Poland. Uh, this is, there is a so-called uh, systematic underpricing uh, going on. Um, uh, this is a particular bullet uh, for March, I think, uh, uh, 2016. So one of these uh, points over there uh, correspond to this uh, scatter plot here. And uh, this is what uh, uh, everybody recognizes uh, uh, to be uh, a simple scatter plot with a couple of outliers. So um, what uh, um, uh, we do uh, with the robust statistics is to make a robust fit uh, that you see is uh, the slope of this uh, uh, line uh, and uh, uh, to detect automatically uh, the outliers that uh, are uh, significant. Uh, this job uh, can, be done, can be done in different ways if you want, but uh, let's have a look of uh, uh, how you would do it with MATLAB, with the instrument already built in MATLAB. You might uh, use uh, the FITLM, for example, uh, uh, and uh, already with FITLM, if you put, uh, uh, you see uh, robo the robust option or, or, or uh, you exclude it, uh, you can uh, see immediately the effect of the outliers on your regression line. 
but uh, what MATLAB offers for uh, uh, really understanding the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, your data set? Uh, not much, I would say. Uh, in the bottom, you see, you see a couple of these instruments. You see a couple of these instruments which do not tell so much. The classical QQ plot over there, uh, well, you don't see much the difference between the robust and the non-robust solution. And the same from uh, the plot of the residuals over there. Uh, what we offer more? Well, for example, uh, here we have uh, the same data set, which is the, the Polish uh, one uh, that I showed uh, you before, uh, show the res index plot of the LTS, uh, or sorry, the L yes, the LMS, the LMS, uh, the least media row square, which is one of the popular, uh, let's say, robust uh, uh, methods. So what uh, uh, you can see here is the result of a brushing that we have done uh, on uh, the residual plot on the right. And the, what you notice, uh, the brushing was done on the points which are labeled with numbers. And what you see, what you can notice immediately is the fact that uh, in spite of the fact that the residual are quite big, uh, some of these uh, uh, points that correspond to that, uh, that residual do are not actually outlined. So what's going on? Uh, probably this robust method is not uh, working so well. And, but uh, you could understand uh, why by looking at this plot, uh, not by looking at uh, the plots uh, that you see here that are the standard one uh, that uh, the uh, old-fashioned, let's say, robust statistics uh, uh, is uh, offering and uh, which are included uh, indeed in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in MATLAB. Uh, what uh, can you do more? Well, look at these plots. So here, what you find, uh, uh, these are clearly things that uh, are included in our FSDA toolbox, um, show how a robust method, in this case the M MM and S, on your right the S estimator and uh, on the left the MM, evolve for different values of the breakdown point or the efficiency depending on the method that you are using. What's, uh, what this means? Well, efficiency and breakdown point basically have to do with the, the amount, the fraction of uh, observations that you are actually using for estimating your, uh, um, uh, your model. Um, typically, people what to do, what to do, what do? Uh, simply, they take, I don't know, 50% of observations. So they take a fixed amount of observations, so with a certain efficiency or breakdown point. And then they do, they use uh, their robust estimator. And the result is exactly that one, the one that you see in MATLAB uh, when you use the default uh, of your uh, uh, fit LM. But uh, what this uh, uh, plot uh, uh, tells you now? Look at the first one here. Observation number 20 25, uh, which uh, is indeed uh, one of the outliers, look at what they do for uh, uh, the maximum value of the fish. They, they are completely, uh, let's say, the trajectory is completely absorbed by the rest. So basically, what does it mean? It means that uh, if you select a certain efficiency above a certain point, in this case quite high, I have to say, well, then you don't see any, anything anymore. But look uh, better uh, at the, uh, the plot on your right. You see the trajectory number 20 25 there, that at some point for a, a breakdown point of, uh, uh, well, I don't see well from here, but I think it's uh, point uh, uh, five, start to enter in the bulk of your, uh, of your uh, uh, trajectory. Enter and uh, you don't notice absolutely anything anymore here. And then it comes back uh, again. So what does it mean? It means that if you use this estimator S with the three different values of the breakdown point, you get completely different results, completely different results. This is to say that uh, uh, if you use, if you don't use uh, with a certain approach that we think we have included in our toolbox, uh, the robust estimator, you may end up with completely different solutions which could be completely unreliable. So you are working in robotics. In, uh, I have seen fantastic things uh, uh, around, uh, but uh, uh, remember that uh, when you use a robust estimator, even robust estimator, for cleaning your data, you may end up uh, with uh, crazy solutions. And uh, we think that uh, the solution of this problem to this problem is uh, to go in the direction of the monitoring. So this type of approach that you find in FSDA. So in FSDA, we have uh, much more. So we have much more, but uh, uh, we have a model for heteroscedastic uh, regression, uh, so situation in which the variability changes, uh, uh, you know, we want on the variables. 
Uh, and uh, of course, uh, well, we have uh, the functions which uh, do the job uh, that are uh, always documented. We have tools uh, for uh, uh, clustering. In this case, uh, is uh, well, you see two trade data set uh, which are quite complex to analyze, and these are the state-of-the-art uh, robust clustering tools, which are clustering methods which account for the possibility to have a certain number of outliers. So you have to trim uh, these uh, potential outliers automatically if uh, you are, you are uh, doing clustering. And especially uh, uh, you have to consider that uh, uh, the classical method for clustering, such as uh, k-means and so on, could not be the best one for you. Uh, this is uh, uh, an example of trade data set uh, which has been treated with uh, this uh, T-class reg, which is uh, uh, a robust uh, regression method uh, um, uh, that allows uh, a certain percentage of, uh, of trimming. And this is, uh, for example, uh, uh, a case in which uh, the K-means, uh, which many, many people use uh, for doing clustering, fail completely in presence of a certain uh, uh, type of outliers. In this case, the outlier is quite... quite uh, uh, systematic, uh, very peculiar, but uh, still, if, as you can see in the top, on the top left, uh, uh, the classical k-means that you find in, uh, in MATLAB fail completely. On the right, uh, it fails still completely if you use uh, a wrong uh, uh, trimming level, but then uh, uh, things uh, can be adjusted very easily if you use one of these uh, uh, robust clustering tools that we have in, uh, in, uh, in FSDA. Well, I don't have time. There are other uh, uh, methods uh, uh, that we have included uh, uh, that you can find uh, uh, documented very extensively in MATA. I would encourage you to, for example, examine the potential offered by the forward search, which is a, um, a method for both multivariate analysis and regression. We have method for uh, uh, time series, robust time series analysis for detecting level shift, outliers, downward spike, upward spike, uh, and so on and so forth, uh, work just published. And uh, mm, well, now uh, there is no time to also uh, comment on uh, uh, this type of plots uh, which are new in the literature. They have been just published together with Peter Rousseau, Mia Huber, and of course Marco, Marco Riani. And, uh, well, this stuff has been also applied to the tsunami uh, detection. And, uh, well, uh, I think I can stop it here. These are the references for uh, the FSDA toolbox. Thank you.